Hi all, this is Tim Olson of Evolution Software. In today's video tip, we're going to go over tools in PowerPack that help validate and repair mesh to make it suitable to convert over into a solid, which you can then do modeling operations such as blends and chamfers. In this example, we're going to download a STL file from Thingiverse. Thingiverse is one of my favorite uh, locations to download and explore STL files. But you have to watch out, not all files on Thingiverse are well made in terms of being closed, uh, watertight uh, bodies. In this example, we're going to show you how you can repair such a file. So when I bring in a file that I'm not familiar with, the first thing I usually do is I bring up the 3D print check from uh, PowerPack. And it provides a summary of information, an overview of the part. And here we can see none of the 3D print checks pass for this part because the part is not a closed volume, the normals are not properly aligned, it has non-manifold edges, that means you have more than three facets sharing one edge, it has collapsed facets and it has duplicated facets and because of the connection between all the edges it appears as if there's many many uh, components making this part. Next I'm going to go ahead and use the power pack auto repair utility and this will go through and remove collapsed facets, uh, duplicated facets, and merge all vertices within our tighter tolerances. Then uh, I'm going to use the Identify Overlap tool. And here we can see what, you know, the main problem with this file is all these facets are, are overlapping on top of each other. And um, as we zoom up, we can see some of these, these overlaps. And our strategy for repairing this part is going to be um, deleting these uh, top two large uh, faces and replacing them with uh, more uh, well-defined facet planes. So I'm going to go over to the delete facets tool and I'm going to select that top plane and delete the whole face. Likewise I'm going to go to the bottom and delete those. Now I'm going to go back to the uh, overlap tool and I'm going to see if any, any of these remaining uh, facets have issues and yes it does. And I just want to visually inspect these, so uh, these overlaps highlight in red. And so what I'm going to do is I just want to see them, and I'm going to go ahead and go back to the overlap tool command. I'm going to do it again, and this time I'm going to tell it to um, remove those overlaps automatically for me. Uh, but that's going to cause, when it removes some of these, it's going to cause some uh, uh, gaps. Or as we zoom in over here, we can see those gaps. So I'm going to go in and manually delete some of these funky facets and replace them with a, a, a more well-defined well facet. And I'm going to use the uh, Select Deep tool to manually go in and delete uh, facets from the uh, facet body that we have remaining. In this case, you can see we've got some very long, slender uh, facets uh, that we're deleting. And uh, by zooming up and using the Select Deep tool, we can, we can grab those. Once we've deleted it, we're going to, now going to use the Add Facet tool from PowerPack, and we're going to put in a quad facet in this gap. And this merges it right in with the body, so that now this, is, this hole has been uh, filled. Uh, let's go ahead and next uh, just uh, show all the free edges now. Uh, make sure that we just have two large loops that are open and that does appear to be the case. So let's uh, turn off our uh, mesh body and we're going to take these two loops and we're going to mesh them with our facet from lines tool. We're going to do the lower plane and then we'll do the upper plane and we'll get two nice planar meshes. This is replacing those overlapping uh, facets from the original file. Now we're going to show our meshes. We should have three mesh bodies and we're going to use the combine tool to combine these three mesh bodies into one. And this new resulting body should be uh, uh, watertight. And we can see that no repairs were done. Let's go back to our 3D print check and we can see uh, all of our tests passed this time and found no issues with the part. And uh, let's do a surface normals just to make sure the part is orientated correctly. And now we'll go ahead and we're going to go to a tool in PowerPack Pro that allows us to convert this mesh into a, 
analytical precise solid. And uh, to help show that this is now a nice precise solid, we're going to zoom up and blend a couple of the edges. And we'll drop a hole into uh, the body. One more thing that we're going to do with this body is we're going to uh, we're going to replace this ragged edge here of facets with a precise circle. And I'm going to go to the Power Pack Best Fit Circle from Points tool, and I'm going to reference a bunch of these points and create a circle from it. Then I'm going to um, take these facets using my favorite uh, Select Deep tool. I'm just going to delete all these facets. And I'll go back to our circle now, and I'm going to create a cutout and have it cut out a precise circle uh, along that edge. Thanks for watching this tip how to repair a mesh using PowerPack. For more tips, come visit us at www.mastertheacad.com.